This is a Windy Chinook 44. It's a 2014 boat and these are really interesting. They actually built these in Norway and Windy built a very high quality boat with a lot of thought that's gone into it. So I'm going to give you a full tour of this one and explain to you exactly what I mean. And that starts right at the back here. Now we've seen the high load platforms. This one's got something a little bit different. It has the extended platform and it has a very good tender on it. It's got a 20 horsepower outboard and wheel steering. And in fact, it's a nearly 10 foot tender. But the way that this is launched is using a Hurley Davit. Let me see if I can explain that to you. So basically it sits on a cradle on the back you can see it down under there and when you want to launch it all you do is you tilt up the front swing it right round, and slide it in very clever nothing to go wrong and uh, and works very well just on the back here i'll show you as well there's quite a bit of storage they put in here which is rather nice so areas like this for putting ropes or fenders or that kind of thing into they're all the way across the back here so that's pretty handy now we have the canopy on at the minute but you can see how all this would come off and that leaves you then with the hard top here so it's open backed all this canopy sections here you can leave this on if you want to as a bit of an extra shade and then just take the back and the sides out now what they've done with this is they've not gone for the big sun pad in the garage they've put seating at the back here and that means you've got masses of space around this table it's a really big area for a 44 foot sports cruiser and this table itself will actually unfold so you can open that right up and have a really big area to sit around and eat and chat and enjoy. And in fact, when you open that, this bar then slides out to support it. And that is a high-low table. You can see it's on a telescopic leg. It's touch of a button stuff. That drops down and that then infills and makes a sunbathing area. So if you do want to sunbathe out here, you can do to your purpose. Very good. In fact, the sunbathing cushions, you can see them. They're in there ready to go there's a wet bar out here this has the sink and the hot plate there and then underneath that's your fridge and then a bit of storage next to it so that caters very nicely for this area and then we'll head forward again up to the business end so as I say those are those infill cushions that go onto the table Make that sunbathing area and then when you're out and cruising well then this is where you drive the boat from and this is very much what windies are all about they're very much built to purpose so it's designed for really good cruising you can have four people sat across here the helms person and three more or under the shelter of the screen you've got this big opening roof section you can see above us that's a hard roof so when it's closed it's really solid and enclosed and the detail here is brilliant. First of all, this Alcantara material is really nice, feels really good and it has all the stitching and so on. But actually, look at things like this. If you want a bit more height, you can drop that over and then slide it out like that. You can see it actually, it's on the far side. So that people can stand there with their head out through the roof if they want to. Or you can have it folded away like that. Very nice detail. And again, up here at the helm, a lot of thought has gone into the ergonomics. So you've got a helm seat here. There's a lift bolster. So if you want to stand at the helm, you can do. And then with this raised platform, this is what I'm talking about. You can stand here, look right out across the front of the boat. That's very nice. If you want to sit and drive it, then of course you can do. That drops back down. But this seat is actually powered. So there's a button just down here. And that is now... Oh, you can see it if I move off it you can see how that powers up and down so you can get a really good driving position also that one there that does the roof so that slides closed like that we'll leave it open for the minute and there's a button next to it and I bet you can't guess what that one is I'll show you if I'm standing here at the helm looking out over the front I can look down flat onto the navigation screen if I'm sat down I'm looking across it unless I push that button look at that that there that's attention to detail isn't it that's fantastic now when you sat here that is at the perfect angle and more attention to detail over here because the rev counters are up here but look how they've paired all these gauges so you've got fuel gauges you've got oil pressure you've got water temperature you've got battery voltage they're for each engine but you can just at a glance just make sure that all these needles are matching so as long as they're all the same you know everything's as it should be 
or something's gone wrong and the pressure's dropped or something like that, you'll see it straight away. So that, again, the way they paired those, a lot of attention to detail. That's the joystick for the IPS controls. We'll look at the engines in a moment, of course. That means that in close quarters you can handle the whole boat from here. So you can twist it or you can push it to the side and it will make the boat react according to what you've done. And then when you add it to see, of course, your throttles are here. Trim tabs are right next to them. VHF radio is down here. There's a bow thruster on this one as well. And everything falls easily to hand, as proper marine journalists apparently say. It's a lovely helm though, isn't it? Proper business-like. As I say, I do like the fact you can stand up with this raised section and look out over the front if you want to. So that is the cockpit, fairly comprehensively filmed. Let's go and have a look inside. I'll slip my shoes off. Now on this one, they've gone for the pale wood. So it feels nice and bright and light in here. Your galley is over on this side. It's all electric cooking, so there is underneath here. That's just to protect it if you want to put things on top of it. Four burner hob. Your oven is underneath. There's a fridge here, of course. Drawers. Storage up in behind here. You see how this is all designed for glasses, so it keeps them safe. Similar sort of thing here for your plates and your cups and so on. Even a little, I think these are called trivets, to put your hot pans on so you don't damage the surface. So that is your galley. I'll pop that back on there. And then on the other side, you've got your seating area down here. Love the lights they put in here. Little portholes as well for a bit of light and a bit of fresh air because you can open those if you want to. And then if we head on forward, this then is the master cabin up here in the bow. Central double bed, massive drawers you can see underneath. And then over here, storage, places like this. Underneath here, see even things like this, little gas strap to hold it open. All attention to detail. Storage all the way around here. And you've got a hatch up above for a bit of light and ventilation. And wardrobe over on this side. There we go. And this, of course, is for a TV. There isn't one here at the minute, but that's what these are for. Power supply and so on, so you can put a television on the wall there if you want to. And the final thing that I haven't shown you in here is the ensuite. So that is just for this cabin. You've got your rotating perspex screen here. So this comes around to keep this section dry. It'll sink, of course. You've got your loo in here as well. So that's a very nice ensuite straight off for this cabin. OK, let's head on back a bit further. Now, the interesting thing about putting that cabin as the master cabin at the front is that leaves room rather unusually to have two cabins back here so whereas most boats of this size and style are a twin cabin this is a triple cabin so this one is a guest cabin and this has two singles in again you've got those opening portholes but yeah nice cabin that and again beautifully trimmed I love the way they've done that with the two-tone wood and the upholstery and so on. Little wardrobe in here. And more storage up in places like this. So very nice cabin, but there is another cabin. So we come back out of here. Now on this boat, the owners are using this pretty much as a bit of a toy cupboard really. So there's quite a lot of gear in here at the minute. So for example, paddle boards and floats and all the stuff for a fun day out on the water. So they're obviously not using this for sleeping in, but as you can see, double bed that goes right the way across. If you wanted to use that as a third cabin, you could do. If you want to use it as a big storeroom, as these guys have done, no problem. Masses of space. I think that's brilliant. And the only thing we haven't looked at then in here is day heads. And that's in here. So you've got your loo and you've got your shower. And this has a rotating perspex screen. So this will come around here and keep this side dry. Ideal. So that is the cabin. We'll have a look around the decks and we'll have a look at the engines. So I'll collect my shoes. This is a nice area to come out into though, isn't it? And as I say, with no sun pad on the back, 
just because such an amazing social area. Brilliant. Okay, we'll head round here. We've got steps up onto the side deck here. And I like the fact they've got rails in places like this to grab hold of as you come out. And you can see here as well, all the way around, even little lights that they put in, you can see underneath here, which is rather lovely. This is this opening roof section that we saw, as I say, it's a big solid roof. And then your radar, your nav lights, searchlight, TV antenna, horns, all that kind of stuff up there, out of the way. There's even a reversing camera, you can just see on the back there, pointing downwards, so that when you're at the helm on that screen, you can actually watch the back of the boat as you reverse into the dock. Fantastic. Let's head on forward. I like these teak decks. Up here, I don't know whether this boat has them, but you can have sunbathing cushions up here. I'm thinking this one doesn't because I can't see any fastenings for them. But of course, they could be added if you wanted them less useful in this country. So I'd imagine that's probably why it doesn't. That's the hatch over that forward cabin. And then right up here at the bow, we have got anchor winch controls. That's these two buttons here, foot buttons for up and down. And then you've got your winch here, of course, and your anchor on the front and a lovely evening in Port Solent. Look at that. Sun's just going down. Okay, let's head on back. I think engines are the last thing to talk about. Look at the way that it's got two sets of spring cleats. You've got spring cleats here, as well as a bound stern cleats, but another set of spring cleats then back here. These boats are really designed to be used. Let's find that handle, there we go. Now the engines are under the floor, they're IPS 600 engines, so if we lift this up here, we will find them in here. These are 435 horsepower each, I think, if I remember rightly, and, uh, and they give them the speed, I would imagine, she must be up in the mid-30s, I would think, about 35 knots at a guess got to be that sort of speed with these engines and I would imagine and then range with this sort of boat you're normally looking at about 300 miles there or thereabouts at a fast cruising speed obviously slow it right down you'll go a lot further generator is in here as well that's up here at the front but actually once you get down and in there that's quite a decent engine room it's one of the advantages of not having a garage again is the fact you don't have that limited space you can really get right down in and around oh, it's pretty clean in there very nice, very nice indeed. I like that. Okay, let's drop that back down. Well, I think that's a fairly comprehensive tour. Let's go and have a sit up at the helm. There we go. And I will say thank you to Argo Yachting, who've got this boat for sale, they've organised this tour, and I'll put a link to them in the description. Thank you to the owner as well for organising it. And as ever, thanks to you guys for watching. We'll catch you again for another yacht tour very soon. Take care. Bye-bye.